What's up, internet? Uh, we're back, and today we finally get to do a video that comes out on a launch day of a product. I think this is what we've been waiting for for a long time, and it's these right here. What are these right here? Well, they are the new and awesome Lawa Nanomorph Zooms. Now, this is great because finally we have a true front-ish scope on a zoom that's a T29 and incredibly lightweight. And this is where things get incredibly awesome. And we're gonna talk about that right now. Anamorphic zooms seems kind of like the holy grail. They're hard to make, they're hard to maintain, uh, and they're usually very expensive. And hardly ever are they front scope. And the ones that are kind of are pretty poor performing. Some of the old Loma photons got converted and you really had to shoot those almost at a T8 to get any sort of like usable image, not to mention lots of breathing, lots of ramping, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, it's really great that someone has finally taken on making a good and affordable lightweight anamorphic zoom because this in a kit is really, really, really useful. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna show you some footage that we shot out on the street and maybe a little bit of uh, other footage we've got here. Uh, one was shot on the Raptor, some other footage might be shot on the Alexa Mini. And so what we're gonna do real quick is just show you some footage we shot around here. We didn't have time to go shoot a scene, but we did have a little bit of time to go out and just shoot some stuff in the neighborhood, which I think will give you a good idea of how these lenses look. Okay, there's some test footage. Right now, what we're gonna do is just jump into kind of a overview of some studio testing. Now, to note on these, these are Super 35 zooms as they claim. That being said, they do have a pretty generous image circle. We shot all of our footage on the Raptor in 7K 16 by nine, which is roughly almost an identical equivalent of say a full frame sensor on uh, like an FX3, FX6, uh, C500. Uh, so basically we wanted to see just how big the image circle was. So the really cool takeaway from that is that yes, they are super 35 and you're gonna get really good performance out of them, both close focus and everything if you shoot them on any super 35 format. But if you want to shoot them in full frame, you don't really need to zoom in on the lens that much to get the image to be fully covered um, and have pretty wild character on the edges. So if you want to shoot, let's say a 35 to 55, now this is a full frame coverage zoom. And then on this lens, if you want to have this be full frame, it's 55 to 100. It's a really great way to think about this as a multi-format zoom. If you wanna shoot on full frame, you just lose a few millimeters, which is not that bad in the grand scheme of things to essentially have a variable prime type of situation in a zoom. So we're gonna do some studio testing and you're gonna see kind of edge performance, some of that vignetting, full frame coverage, super 35 coverage. You're also gonna see some breathing, the flares. So let's jump into that really quick and then we'll come back out and talk about some pros and cons.
All right, let's start with the pros on these, in my opinion. One, they exist. That is the biggest pro currently, because really nothing else exists in this market. So this is awesome. Second, they're crazy lightweight. Uh, I think that's maybe the other biggest. If you look at all the other anamorphic zooms on the market, they're massive, like massive. There's no way you're running those on gimbals. This is something you could get by with an FX3. You could really run this on an RS3. That's awesome. And adding to the size of these as a pro, they're all 77 millimeter fronts with screw-ons, which is always very helpful if you wanna keep a lightweight package for just screw-on filters if you're running on a gimbal or anything else. It's really cool that you can make a zoom that's anamorphic that has a freaking 77 millimeter front. That's crazy. Another pro is just the build quality. I'm really surprised that even for the price, they were able to do something that felt so solid. I mean, going through the zoom range, it doesn't feel like there's loose elements or stuff is poorly constructed. It's all metal. There's tons of flexibility in the um, iris and zoom and focus dampening. Hard stops feel really solid and well-constructed. I really have no qualms about the overall build quality. I feel like these are surprisingly robust for being as small as they are. Moving forward, they're all T29, they're T29 constant. We didn't see a ton of ramping in the footage when zooming in and out, which is also really nice for a consistent T-stop as you're zooming in and out, so that's really nice. Also, the price. Let's talk about the price. The price is... I think it's a pretty fantastic price when you look at other anamorphic zooms on the market. I mean, this is really, really, really affordable. Now, affordable is kind of a word that's hard to digest sometimes because even at this price, that might seem very unaffordable. But when you compare it to other things in the market, these are really, really, really fantastic options for the price. Okay, let's talk about these also in price in relation to the nanomorphs. Now, the nanomorphs, if you get the cine versions, are around $1,500 a piece. Now, it would take a lot of single focal length nanomorphs to equal one of these 28 to 55. So in that, there's intrinsic value. These are T29 versus the T24 nanomorphs. And because this is a zoom, I do think based on our testing that when we had the nanomorphs, they look ever so slightly sharper. So if sharpness is your main concern, I do feel like these are going to be maybe just a little less sharp wide open. Now, if you're willing to shoot everything at a four, at that point, it's pretty irrelevant. Okay, let's move in now to maybe some cons that we see, and they're only a con if you think they are a con. We're gonna talk about the flares first. Now, the flare options, obviously, like all their other lenses, are going to come in a neutral, a amber, and a blue. So if you like your choice, that is a pro. But as a con, you might think that a lot of the lower end anamorphics have uh, kind of a less than attractive flare structure. And that might be accurate, and that might be true. I would personally agree with that. And these are going to give you, you know, depending on your light source, that pretty streaky thin line. That being said, under the right circumstances, I do feel like these lenses maybe have the cooler or better looking of the flares in uh, the Lawa lineup, and that includes the Proteus, um, the Nanomorphs. So I think, they're moving forward in the right direction, but still the streaky flare exists um, in the right circumstances. Now, the only other real con that we can find with them is just some consistency if you're trying to duplicate things. So there is a focal length overlap. You can shoot 50 millimeters on both lenses. Now, if you were to do that, the distortion at 50 millimeters on both lenses looks different. So if you were trying to do continuity, I would recommend shooting always a 50 on the same lens, because if you mix and match interchangeably on a 50, you might notice that they do look slightly different. And that might be my only real con, other than the fact that they do breathe. I wouldn't say a considerable amount, but they do breathe pretty heavy which I guess is to be expected because they are anamorphic zooms and they are very small. But in the grand scheme of things, if you look at say another 1.5 that's out there, the Atlas Mercuries, I don't really think that's going to be a big breaking point factor. It just depends on what you're going for in your look. So this is our overview of the Lawa Nanomorph zooms. 
we've really enjoyed our time with them. The really great thing about these is that I think you can cut these in with almost any 2X lens that's out there really because it's a front scope. And the difference in most circumstances, I don't think that a viewer is going to be able to tell that apart. So if you're running around with a set of 2X primes or 1.5 primes and you wanna zoom to accompany that, I think this is a really great neutral lens that you could really drop into several other lens prime sets if you wanted a zoom that could match. Now there's a lot of things you can do in Resolve if you're dropping this in, say, with the Remus. Well, we'd go into Resolve, add a bunch of barrel distortion. Now I think you're gonna be in a really good starting point. It's pretty cool what they've done with these, and it's something that we'll probably pick up here at the shop just because there's nothing on the market like them, and they're so, so, so versatile, especially for the price. And we have one final thing that is neither a pro nor a con. We're just gonna talk about the distortion on these lenses. They are pin cushion, but as you move in and out of the focal lengths, like most zooms, that distortion changes. It's easy to see on a prime because you change the lens and there's something physically there, but as you're zooming through, you can watch the distortion change. So if you are trying to do usable zooms, you might notice that during your zoom, you are getting some distortion movement as you're zooming. Now, you might like that, you might hate it, I don't know. Also, I don't really know how to judge that because I'm not, I haven't been in that position before really with a lens like this to make an actual statement if that's something that bothers me on set or not. Pin cushion though, as we all know, at this point in time, you can almost eradicate completely in post. So if you like it and you like the flexibility of a neutral lens, this is really great. And maybe, you know, in post, boing, a little bit of distortion change and you've got your barrel or even just neutral in general. So that is our basic overview of the distortion on these lenses. All right, everybody, that is our overview on the new Lau and Nanomorphs. We love them. Thank you so much for checking out this video and watching. If you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.